Tubals in a China Shop is brought to you by these great companies that are giving us money to let you listen to their stuff. Bullshit, Kyle. We make this show. We make this show. You and me. Tubals in a China Shop is brought to you by us. <laughs> Someone's got to pay the bills, Dan, because it's not our trading. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Roll them. You are listening to an entertainment program put together by a company called Financial Ineptitude. Anything said on this show is not an endorsement or professional advice. Would you really want to tell a court of law you were suing us because you thought taking financial advice from two idiots on a podcast put out by Financial Ineptitude was a good idea? Really? Clown hats on your face. Well, hello and welcome to the China Shop, everyone. Get on inside. I'm shopkeeper Dan. With me, as always, is Kyle, creator of FinancialNeptitude.com. How are you doing today, Kyle? I'm doing pretty good. How are you doing, though? You were feeling kind of under the weather this week. Uh, yeah, I'm having a rough week, but that's okay. You know, I uh, rally for the episode on the weekend, you know? We know you don't take days <laughs> off. <laughs> <laughs> never, never. Yeah, right. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I think I did too much in too little a time, and it's just knocked me on my ass. Well, I mean, we just spent the last two years in isolation, and then you suddenly have been out of town like two weekends in a row and then had visitors from other cities. I miss people and spending time with people. <laughs> I just like doing it uh, from a distance. <laughs> from a distance. <laughs> oh, come on into the shop with us today, folks. Sit back, relax, and hedge against that rage machine. We'd like to welcome any new listeners just joining us. We're here smashing our way through a complete set of fine china, sharing those ever-growing strategies for maximizing gains and cutting losses. If you are new to the shop and stock trading in general, you can always check out our knowledge and resource centers on financialneptitude.com or give one of our many beginning trading episodes a listen. We'll have all those links in the episode description for you. But, uh, you know, best place to be is hop on over to the Discord server. We get on there all the time with a lot of great people. Totally free, no paid tiers or special access areas. Just hanging out, talking shop, trying to trying to make each other better. If anything, it's the, the opposite of having to pay for it because we... We like to give things away for people who join. That's true. That's true. Our biggest business expense, if you find your way over to that Discord <laughs> server and slide into Kyle's DMs with your mailing address, we'll, we'll send you some swag. We'll do I it. Ha I hate that term. Yeah, that's why I keep <laughs> saying it. I know you keep right, doing right, it. Right. I know. Right, I right. know. Just send... <laughs> no, no, do it. Do it. It's fine. <laughs> Just send Kyle a private message. A private uh, message. Uh, however <laughs> private you want it to be is up to you. <laughs> Private, not privates. Not privates. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> obviously, uh, we're just really glad everybody's here. We have a lot of fun, and it's always better with friends. Always better with friends. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Kyle, we got any uh, show news going on? Uh, let's see. We just uh, just did a, uh, talked to James Woodall, who's going to be coming out on the 14th. Uh, next week, we'll be speaking with Kevin Rendino and Eric Smolinski. Uh, the week after that, Mika Kessel. Uh, and then uh, you're going to be out of town on the 23rd. Oh, yeah, that's right. So instead of doing our normal weekly episode that week, I think what we're going to do is release a new uh, mini series we've been working on, or at least the pilot. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, Roundtable Square Traders with uh, shop uh, superfan Joel, MC, and Flary. Yes. Making up the other traders at the table. Yes. What what can we expect with that, Kyle? Uh, I have no idea because we haven't recorded it yet. <laughs> <laughs> what it should be is uh, um, letting you know some of the other, letting some other people ask these experienced traders questions that they want to know the answer to. Okay, so it should just be a good, fun discussion about uh, things we can do to improve our our trading. Yeah, yeah. And if uh, if people like it and they want to sign up to be the next uh, listener joining in, uh, be on the round table. Yeah, just just message us. Would you say how would they message you? I would say me. Me, 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 me. And, and, and I'll just know what that means. Not the content of the message. Oh, oh. Where did they get a hold of you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, two bowls at financialinstitute.com or you can just DM me on uh, uh, Discord or Twitter. Yeah, no sliding though. No sliding. Just, just stroll, stroll into the DMs. Walk in like you belong there. Yes. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Not the content. Oh, all right. <laughs> 
<laughs> we have got a wispy, wily, witless show for you today. Lots of market moving news, plenty of stocks on the radar, and more options than ancient alien conspiracy theories. There are so many of them. Uh, up to season 17 on what they call the History Channel? I don't know. I was looking through the History Channel's like streaming options, and it was all a bunch of like conspiracy theory bullshit. Yeah, I remember when it was just the World War II channel. Yeah, I was fine with that. <laughs> <laughs> I could never get enough of that. It's like now they got like <laughs> Man in the High Castle is like part of their canon. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. Anyway, reach out to us. We love your messages and comments on Twitter, Facebook, Discord. We've got the link to that uh, server in the episode description. If you're old school, you can send us an email to two bulls at financialineptitude.com. That's the number two bulls. Or you can uh, give us a phone call, 725-22-BULLS, 725-222-8557. You can also send a text message there. Oh, you can? Yeah, yeah. It will Ah. receive texts. I guess I should have been saying that for the last two years, but you know. Yeah, because many people probably be more apt to text us than. Nobody uses the phone anymore, right? Not not to make voice calls. That's archaic. Do you even have a phone? I don't think I have a phone in the house. Oh, like a I landline? A, I have a camera that I carry around with me everywhere. Oh, your pocket computer can do yeah. all sorts of cool stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think anybody has a phone these days. <laughs> Just wait wait when it becomes standard that you don't get voice minutes. I can't wait till they stick it in our eyeballs. Oh, an actual and iPhone? Have, yeah, and you'll never have to carry it around again. <laughs> Shut up and take my money. Right? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Give us a phone call. Maybe you got a hot stock tip. Maybe you want to tell us about a great trade you just made. Or maybe you're just trying to kick a damn football and some heartless bitch refuses to hold the damn thing in place. Uh-huh. I always hated that about Lucy. Right? I'm like, how is this endearing? No, it was cruel. It was also, wow, well, <laughs> dumb as Charlie that he never figured it out either. I mean, I always expected eventually there'd be a comic strip where he just beelined and kicked her. I think there was. I mean, that's what I would have done. <laughs> I was just going for the football, Lucy. Maybe if <laughs> just, you'd held it still. Just kicked her right in the head. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Two bulls in a china shop does not condone violence against women. Or cartoons. I do condone violence in cartoons. It's my favorite kind of violence. Against. Uh, I said against cartoons. Oh, yeah. No, we yeah, don't 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 do violence to cartoonists. Don't hurt. Don't hurt our favorite cartoons. Yeah, don't hurt cartoons. <laughs> God. <laughs> so off the rails. Kyle, let's oh, uh let's man. talk about the bad results before okay. we get in too much trouble. This is uh this is already going mm-hmm. <laughs> into the weeds. Uh, let's see. If you recall, uh, I wanted to go along Burlington Coat Factory. Uh, you talked us into going with Carr, and it looks like it's a good thing we did. Mm. Put in, pulled a nice, uh, what do you call it, um, psychological win over Random, I think, this week by taking his losing pick last week and winning on it this week. Oh, yeah. Uh, let's see. It opened above our 39.74, or it opened above 39. We were going to be short if it was below that long above. Uh, it was 39.74. Hit TP1 at $41 on Wednesday, uh, closed at forty two seventeen. So our total is now up to $551.56. Wow. Oh, yeah. That was a hell of a pick, huh? Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, double what I would have made. Fuck you, random. Take that. Fuck uh, you, random. <laughs> random had AVY, which I don't remember what that was. Avery Dennison Corporation. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, Open the week at 186.12, closed at 190.95, puts random at $509.63. I don't know. Can you see us back there? Should we wave? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to toss my beer out the window, see if it hits him. <laughs> That's what I do to tail or people who tailgate me. You toss your trash uh, at them? My beer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that can be to slow down. It was, yeah. was that course light can? Shit. Two balls in a china shop does not condone drinking and driving. <laughs> or road rage. <laughs> or road rage. Or littering. <laughs> Good Lord. Oh I, oh, I blame the NyQuil. What's, it, what's, your, what's your excuse? <laughs> Oh, I don't have an excuse for another 20 minutes. See if the listeners can spot when Kyle takes his gummy. (laughs) All right, let's uh, let's talk about some news. Do it. Dow drops deep on moving inflation. COVID frustration, war damnation. We're just bringing you the fucking news. You got to recognize the game if you don't want to lose. We're just skip the two bulls trading information. 
nation. Yeah, we are. Rioters raiding, oh. inside a trading, taxes mm. are raising, bills mm -hmm. on the hill. We got a crypto mill. No, they ain't growing weed. When the Fed speaks today, it's some shit we don't need. Sing it, man. Two fools trading information. What? Two fools trading information. I'm inclined to agree. Two fools trading information. That is accurate. Very accurate. What information? All right. Should we start with the slew of Fed speakers we had on? Yeah, a lot of Fed talking this week. Uh, Jerome Powell was on Thursday, and and there's not a whole lot in his speech to really kind of cover, other than the fact that he did nothing to dissuade the opinion that a 75 bip raise is on the table still, and that I think is what most people are taking away from his his uh, time on the mic. Yeah. Uh, in fact, he actually is. Most of his comments were about how. Uh, their main task is bringing down inflation and th the fact that they need to act quickly and strongly as they have been doing and uh, also said they're going to keep at it until the job is done. Right, which is a lot more, uh, I'll say, it seems like they've got a lot more confidence in, in their actions and it's less like, oh, this is just transitory, this is transitory. <laughs> like, all right, the shit's happening and we got to do something about it. We're going to do something about it till it's done. Uh, fear... Fear versus greed. Yeah, fear three times stronger. You think you think they're finally afraid? I think they were afraid because now the markets are not looking as strong as they were when they were refusing to act. Yeah, I guess it's easy to easy to not act when things look really strong, huh? Right. Uh, market didn't seem phased <laughs> by his his speech. Yeah, and that's that's what was really surprising because it seems like the percentage probability of a seventy five bip hike has gone up now. It's now at 75%. I want to say it was around 60 the last time we talked about it. Uh, what do the other Fed members speak about? I think? Yeah, uh, I had a, I found a story about Waller, Christopher Waller uh, on Friday mm -hmm. came out and, and basically re-emphasized that he, he's backing a 75 BIP interest rate increase this month. That seemed to be kind of a common theme from the other ones too. I can't remember the other guy I was looking at. The other comments might have been Brainerd. It might have been one of the other ones. Uh, but yeah, it seemed like they're all pretty, at least everyone who was talking on Friday seemed like they're all pretty united in wanting 75 bips. Uh, I think Kansas City Fed President Esther George also spoke Friday. I don't, I don't remember exactly what they said, but I'd be shocked if it wasn't in line. It seems like everyone's pretty well united this time. The thing that struck me about it was Waller came out and just straight said like, hey, we got to stop trying to guess the future and just focus on what's the data saying right now and how do we respond? Oh, the data that nobody understands how to read? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Apparently... Apparently, we're going to get less uh, less out of the Fed of, well, we think in a couple of months, it'll cool down. They're, they're not going to be saying right. that shit anymore. Uh, in fact, I think one of them is actually saying they thought inflation was going to peak or hit. I think their end year target was somewhere around like 4%. Maybe not target, but like what they thought it was going to be. Right. Not not useful uh, doing anything other than being like, well, the Fed are idiots because <laughs> it's still at 9% <laughs> at the end of the year. I think I think that's the, they just got burned too many times of looking dumb. They're like, all right, we got to cut this shit out. I, there is something to that. Uh, I mean, better to do something, even if it's wrong, rather than to sit on your hands and or at least that's a military philosophy. Maybe when it's not life or death, it doesn't necessarily mean work that way. <laughs> but at least, you know, like look like you know what you're doing. Like, there is something yeah. to that, I think. Yeah, yeah. I like the phrase, don't let the perfect be the enemy mm. of the good. And I've seen a lot of people will sit on their hands because it's not like the perfect thing they could be doing. And inaction makes things worse. Actually, that I think that sentiment is actually why we started doing this podcast when we did, rather than trying to do it perfectly we thought let's just get it out there yeah just do it sometimes you learn more doing that or you learn what does and doesn't work yeah well, luckily it's a perfect podcast now kyle uh right i mean <laughs> i think so i think i'd change is the number of listeners <laughs> <laughs> oh kyle you're the only listener that right. matters to me Aww. Aww. all right um <laughs> what's the next story on my list here oh b of a b of a has come out and revised their uh, recession forecast. Oh, remember they were one of like the first people who were uh, calling that uh, the end of the year the U.S. would be in a mild recession, quote unquote. Yeah, uh, yeah. Michael 
Gappen uh, was the chief ec- economist that was hired over there at B of A. He was the one who was behind that call. But mm-hmm. this Friday, he and his team of economists have said the situation has changed over the past few months. They are th- saying that the U.S. GDP growth is showing underlying momentum and uh, that they had not anticipated. The labor market is remaining hot despite the Fed's tightening of financial conditions. And recent retail sales data shows consumer spending has held up. Interesting. So, yeah, they have revised their outlook for the U.S. economy in favor of prolonged expansion, more tightening from the Federal Reserve, and a later downturn in labor markets. Wow. Okay. That's, that's some positive news. Uh, kind of. Though. They, they, they're still predicting a mild recession. They just don't think it'll be until the first half of 23 now instead of, I guess, like now. Oh, oh, oh okay. It sounds more like, uh, well, shit, it hasn't happened yet. So uh, in six more months, that's when it'll happen. <laughs> oh, well, that doesn't sound so rosy. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, Bank of America. What do you know? Uh, good question. Can't think of anything good to say about him. <laughs> well, my, Michael Burr is is still saying that that uh, we're not we haven't found the bottom. So, and that's just what a bear would say. A perma bear? <laughs> what are you talking about? That's crazy. Well, I mean, eventually he's going to be right, right? Some point it'll be lower. Yes, yes. And so will perma bulls, like the ones here in this China shop. I voted on a. A Twitter poll from T3 Live, those guys over there, they asked if we were bullish Mm. or bearish. I said, I don't think I'm allowed to be bearish. But my first thought when I was picking, uh, you know, what I was going to vote on there is like, what time frame are we talking about? Like, do you mean today? Yeah. Yeah. Next week? Or do you mean in 10 years? (laughs) Those are all wildly different scenarios. Yes. You're not allowed to be bearish, but uh, maybe short term. As we've shorted stocks for the last three months in our bet picks. (laughs) (laughs) It's it's a great effect. (laughs) That's crazy. Oh, we went we went long last week. Maybe we need to be the bull and the bear. Uh, one of us can just take on the uh, perma bear mentality, or we can flip flop. As, as long as we're diametrically opposed, right? That's all that matters. <laughs> all right. Well, what else you got for uh, for news here? Apparently, traders are hoarding natural gas at sea. So they can cash in once uh, the winter price surge happens in Europe. That is brilliant. Right. But if enough people do it, it's going to keep prices actually lower, won't it? That's That was my thought. Uh, it's a, it's a story out of, it's a story coming out of Markets Insider. And they do mention that the EU themselves are stockpiling mm-hmm. liquid natural gas and they're, they're moving on some, uh, some offshore conversion facilities mm-hmm. because they can't get them built in time on in time on on land so they're going to be doing them on, on the on the sea <laughs> um but yeah reading through that everybody's doing it maybe that was my exact thought like well then what's the advantage well the real question i have then is like how much does it cost to have a container ship full of natural gas just sitting out in the fucking ocean waiting for winter i don't know i don't know and i thought i thought uh, uh liquid natural gas had a like a some leakage like it, it what you can't just keep it in liquid without losing some of it oh really i could be wrong there i could be wrong there i i'm not familiar with that anybody who works with the uh, at a refinery feel free to reach out let us know yeah so russia doesn't seem to be able to <laughs> russia choked off the flows is, is right. the, with the way they phrased it in the story but i mean with all the sanctions what, what else were they going to do uh, yeah no kidding Strangely enough, though, with India and China buying so much of it from Russia, like that, what they were buying from countries that weren't Russia, like it's almost, I don't know, to me, I think, does, doesn't that kind of even it out? But um, See, I thought that a lot of that was already, like we talked to somebody who said that from the last sanctions, like when they invaded, was it Crimea? Yeah. That those sanctions were all still in place. So it was still China, India, like Venezuela or other of those countries that were the only ones trading with Russia still. So he didn't seem to think that it was going to make any difference where their oil went because it's already was out of the market. Right. I don't know that I believe that. Otherwise, why would you shank- sanction it again? Yeah. 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 It's, it's all so complex and confusing. It's almost like you need to study economics for decades to have any idea. <laughs> All these things interact with each other, right? Right. (laughs) 
So it looks like uh, I know th- part of the story was Dutch TTF natural gas futures, which which is, represents the European benchmark, mm-hmm. did shoot up 36% on Monday hmm. in a single session, uh, coming off the of news that the Russian state energy giant Gazprom has indefinitely halted supply. Okay, so they have finally cut it out then. Yeah, the Nord Stream 1 pipeline mm-hmm. is now apparently just over for good. Oh, goodbye cooperation. Right? We'll see how that plays out. Uh, yeah. Be, see how well it worked with North Korea when we isolated them? Yeah, they're a bastion of <laughs> entertainment and development and culture. Oh, All those hit North Korean songs on the airwaves. That's where K-pop comes from, isn't it? That's South Korea. Oh, wait. Which one's the... <laughs> yeah. Which one's... K propaganda prop. <laughs> K- North Korea bad, South Korea good. <laughs> no, I was trying to think of already to work propaganda in there. Couldn't oh. do it. <laughs> Not thinking fast enough. Don't you besmirch BTS. They've got more global fans. Oh, God, that was a save it for the next week, Dan. Oh. Got more options than BTS fans. Who's BTS? The biggest K-pop band in the world. Have you not heard of BTS? Oh, I have never heard of them. Speaking of financial news. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you have any other Welcome stories? <laughs> <laughs> I got I got one last uh, quick one. Apparently, here in the United States, more people are confident they know finance, despite evidence that they are getting Americans are getting less financial literate. Yeah, financially literate. I am. That does not surprise yeah. me. Yeah. One, it doesn't yeah. surprise me that people are like, I know what the fuck I'm doing, and. They uh-huh. don't, because uh, I've met people before. I know how that works. <laughs> you've, t- you've spoken with people, huh? Yes. The more confident somebody <laughs> is in an answer, the, usually the less they know about it. Yeah, yeah. How we, that's so weird. So how, how confident do you feel? Me? Yeah. Oh, uh, well, I mean... <laughs> I want to I want to say really confident but honestly I'm like I did we've done this show for so long but I feel like there's going to be questions I can't answer. <laughs> do you want to take the quiz that they took? I do, but real quick I want to I want to cite that uh they were looking at the they they do the survey every 3 years. So looking between 20 2009 and 2018, the level of financial literacy declined, but the confidence increased. Which gets to your point, um, right? That people feel like they know more, but I- in fact, they're scoring lower than ever. Uh, has that started since? When did we start the show? Twenty twenty. And when did the 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 data start with the declining a bit more confident? Two thousand nine. Okay, okay. So it's not our fault. No, 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 no. Oof. No. In fact, <laughs> that's part of what we wanted to do with the show was increase financial literacy. <laughs> right, but maybe we're contributing. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we're contributing. Yeah, damn it! I know what's going on. I listen to two okay, right. <laughs> The only <laughs> only way to get to the bottom of this is is, is go ahead. Give give me this quiz. I will do my best. I have genuinely not heard any of these questions. We'll see. All right, there's twenty questions on here. It said it was a five question thing, so I'm just gonna like pick a couple from the different um, okay. categories. Okay. There's like an inf- okay. So let's start with this one here. It says. I don't know what this INR is either, their abbreviation. I'm just going to say dollars because that makes more sense. Uh, Suppose you put $1,000 into a savings account with a guaranteed compound interest rate of 10% per year. How much would Mm -hmm. there be at the end of five years? Okay. Wait, wait. How much much should I put in? 10,000? Put in 1,000. I put in $1,000 and it's 10% a year. Compound, 10%. Compound and then how much, compounded annually. Yes. And how much at the end of five years? More than $1,500? Exactly $1,500? Less than $1,500? Or you don't know? Oh, more than $1,500. Ding. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, question number five. Before I buy something, I carefully consider whether I can afford it. Do you agree? Oh, no. Disagree? Neutral or don't know? Well, that seems like an opinion question. <laughs> uh <laughs> what would the financial institute think the right answer De- should be <laughs> define afford do i have that cash in my wallet right now i think it means or can you afford the payments if you were to charge it oh oh well then yes i would definitely definitely look at my budget before I did something for payment <laughs> yeah all right. Uh, oh, here's a good one. Uh, if someone offers you the chance to make a lot of money, there is also a chance that you will lose a lot of money. Is that true, false, or don't know? Does it involve any sex acts? It doesn't say anything about crypto either. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm going to say that 
the more people say, the more more people are pitching like you're going to make a lot of money. It's definitely involving losing some money. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's definitely true. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, let's see. There's a good inflation one on here. I've got an indicator to sell you, Kyle. All you got to do is trade exactly like I tell you. Yeah. All right, here, I got two more then. Let's see. So far, you're batting 1,000. Okay. Ooh, right. no pressure. Imagine that the interest rate on your savings account is 6% a year and inflation is 8% a year. Oh, God. After one year, would the money in your account have more purchasing power than today, the same, or less? Less. Uh, yeah, nailed it. Also, where's the 6% savings account? <laughs> How can I get it? <laughs> Oh, uh, let's see. If each of the following persons had the same amount of annual income of tax, who would meet the greatest amount of life insurance? <laughs> a young widow with two children, a young single woman without any children, an elderly retired man with a wife who is also retired, or a young married man without children? Oh, the, the widow with two kids. Yeah. I don't even understand the question, but that's definitely the answer. Yeah. <laughs> Wow, all people right. are getting these wrong. Yeah. Shit. I mean, these look all that hard. We we got a long way to go, Kyle. We got to educate America. How confident did you feel you were going to do well on that? I didn't I wasn't super confident. I was like, I feel like I should be confident, but I was I thought maybe there were trick questions. I thought so too. I saw those questions. I'm like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> I bet I think random could have passed that. <laughs> yeah. <right. laughs> Now I'm feeling like I should be a financial advisor. No shit, right? <laughs> okay, so six is smaller than eight. Six being smaller than eight, what do you think that means? Well, I think what it means is, is inflation good or bad? Do you know that? <laughs> is interest rates good or bad? <laughs> right, right. Well, it depends. Am I paying the interest or collecting the interest? Right. Is that the basic... <laughs> Can we please get some classes in schools for people on this stuff? Yes, yes. Hey, you know who knows a lot about interest rates? And who also is confident in her abilities? And who uh, I absolutely knows knows way more than I ever yeah. could. <laughs> Where's <laughs> off? Where's she at? <laughs> <laughs> oh, the wonderful Sue Pullen, of course. Uh, Two Bulls in a China Shop is proudly brought to you by Sue Pullen at Fairway Independent Mortgage, an equal housing lender. Sue Pullen is a certified mortgage advisor who focuses on finding the right product for you and your needs. She has over 20 years of experience helping thousands of homeowners purchase, refinance, even do the amazing, wonderful reverse mortgage. <laughs> Sue loves to help. She's licensed in 29 nope, states nope, and nope. 30 now. 30? What? Oh, no, wait, hang on. I just got another text. 31. She just got Ohio, Nebraska. <laughs> Are you serious? I swear to God, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's licensed in 31 states, but not growing. Uh, so reach out and see what Sue could do for you. Best way to reach her, just give her a call, 520-977-7904. Or you can send her an email, S-P-U-L-L-E-N at fairwaymc.com. Fairway Independent Mortgage has an MLS number, 2289. Sue Pullen has an MLS number, 206048. That email again is spullen at fairwaymc.com. And that phone number, 520-977-7904. And Two Bulls in a China Shop is also proud to be affiliated with Trade Pro Academy. Trade Pro! Trade Pro Academy is the educational platform that offers institutional trader development programs to new and experienced independent traders, which means... You can learn to trade like those big institutions. Mm -hmm. They have an amazing staff of highly knowledgeable and successful traders, one of which you just retired. That's right. And there's no better place that we found to learn everything you need to know to be a successful trader. Find them online at tradeproacademy.com or you can just use our affiliate link in the episode description. It's a great way to support the show and improve your own knowledge and skills. If you do join that Discord, we have a 10% discount code for those members. Uh, just Well, I guess it doesn't matter if you tell George now because he's not the CEO. Uh, and, you know, on top of all that, I've got to take a second to, to let everybody know how amazing the guys over at Orderflow Labs are. Mm -hmm. uh, they've, they've got uh, this just phenomenal toolkit for trading futures on Sierra Charts, Motive Wave, Ninja Trader, uh, amazing custom studies for structure and execution. They got buy sell zones, exhaustion absorption detectors, reconstructed tape. They got Joe pivots. Word on the street is maybe even some Leo lines coming out. I don't know. That might Leo. Leo. <laughs> <laughs> they got something for everybody, and they're constantly uh, testing their studies, and and they offer uh, just the greatest support. 
I've ever seen mm-hmm. uh, to help people use these tools. So if you are trading futures, you got to check them out at orderflowlabs.com. All right. Should we talk about some stocks? Yeah, let's do it. Let's, uh, let's talk about some stocks. Stock time! Now let's talk about stock time. Looking for setups and still not advice. Big news, fresh news, and earnings. All that we're saying is still not advice. Stop, stop. Take that, lawyer. I can't believe you haven't heard of BTS. Uh, I'm going to have to look it up now. They are literally the like biggest band in the world right now. Huh. Oh, well, it's I, fucking ridiculous. I'm going to have to check them out. Are they good? I didn't say they were good. Oh, okay. That's K-pop. I mean, it's K-pop. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, stock news. All right. <laughs> Uh, did you know that Snapchat was feuding with Meta? No, but if anybody feuding Meta is a friend of mine. Yeah, I just don't know if Snap is the one to be throwing stones at. The CEO, Evan Spiegel, has uh, said that he's not buying Zuckerberg's $10 billion metaverse. Quote, I'm just trying to figure out what it means. Aren't we all? <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. But uh, he's, he's throwing shade at the, their business plan, basically, where they're basically just trying to throw money at a problem to create something, uh, this digital mm. space. Uh, okay, here he is. Uh, Spiegel, you said, what gives me a lot of hope is that historically spending large amounts of some money is not always a predictor of success. Well, I guess they're, they're, that's, this article lists them as like competitors going head to head when it comes to t- technology. I guess if they're social media companies, that makes sense. Mm. I just wouldn't, I would use Snapchat for something completely different than what I use Facebook for. Yeah. Yeah. Um, wow. Well, I haven't used Snapchat in a while. I, don't, I actually but- never have, to be honest. <laughs> But I mean, yeah. Snapchat has not been doing very well lately. Uh, they just recently announced that they're cutting twenty percent of their workforce. How's their stock doing? Oh, it's down over fifty percent so far this year. And I remember when Snap was one of the free stocks Robinhood would give you for oh. signing up. <laughs> yeah, Snap has not been doing good. It's still got a big gap to fill if it ever gets back up above sixty. But at twelve, that's a ways to go. Holy shit! Actually, they got another gap the- at twenty to fifteen. End of 2021, they were they were up in the 80s. Yep. Yikes. Now they're down to $12.65. And making fun of Meta. Fun of Meta. <laughs> <laughs> Take that, Zuckerberg. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I think I posted that in the Discord. I don't disagree with what he's saying. I just, uh, I mean, maybe you might want to focus on your own company. Right. Oh. What do you got for us? Yeah, right. What do I got? Well, I mean, I got a, a quick thing about Meta. Oh, you do? Since since they came up, um, I don't know if I posted it or not, but they they dissolved their uh, the team. They had a team responsible for discovering potential harms to society in its own products. Oh, yeah, they went ahead and dissolved that team. Oh, there must not have been any issues. Couldn't find any. None. Yeah, it's only oh, only good for the world. Yeah, <laughs> that's like uh, I went and studied my diet. Uh, and then just took the things that I think taste good and looked at how they affect me uh, physically. And I found no correlation. Everything that I like to eat is a okay. Hey, that's, that's how I do my diet too. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm doing fine. <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Fuck you. Meta. The phrase of the day is conflict of interest. The, the larger story that I came across that I want to talk about <clears throat> Uh, was apparently Bob Iger, the S- Disney CEO, came out and uh, former Disney CEO mm-hmm. came out and said that they were looking to buy Twitter back in 2016, mm-hmm. and they found that there were too many bots. Really, and they backed off. Yeah, yeah even though even though they were they were offered quite a big discount to buy the company for the number of bots that were there, they were like, "Yeah, oh wow, yeah, not gonna do it." Now, part of it was was also it's just off brand for Disney, like you yeah, know, they're that like makes family, for little kids, and Twitter's pretty nasty. Yeah, uh, but I found it, and as as did Musk, <laughs> found it interesting that the Disney who took a look at the books were like, "Well, there's just too many bots here." I wonder if Disney's going to be called to the stand and with this court case. And on, on top of that, because you know, obviously, there's still the ongoing Twitter Musk law lawsuit mm-hmm. court case. Uh, cause Disney apparently never publicly said, we're going to buy Twitter and sign actually inked a deal. Right. <laughs> Iger never signed a piece of paper saying he's going to buy it. Unlike Musk. Uh, but there actually, there's been a Twitter, uh, whistleblower. Oh, so the plot really is thickening. Yes. 
um, Peter Zatko, former Twitter head of a security, mm -hmm. made a complaint to the SEC that Twitter showed no interest in finding out how many bots are on the platform. That's not surprising. He added that they couldn't figure out how many bots were on the site, even if they wanted to, because they don't have the resources to do so. No, they can tell where you are right now at this moment, what what things linger on your screen yep. when you're scrolling. But not if you're a human or a but, bot. Yeah, they can't tell that. So this uh, Bob Iger, is he going to get called to the witness stand when uh, uh, the best trial starts? I don't know if, if they'll actually get uh, Iger in court, but... Uh, uh, I do know that the Musk legal team has uh, subpoenaed the the whistleblower Peter Zatko, and he has agreed to testify. Good. Yeah, I'm really curious how this works out. I mean, I'm not a huge fan of either of those companies, but it just seems like Twitter's full of shit. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, look at look at what they do. I mean, yes. I mean, Twitter. We use it because we have to. Mm -hmm. But. Uh, Whenever I get on there, most of it, to me, seems like noise. Yeah, yeah. All right, should we, uh, should we just move on to some crypto? I think that was, I think that was enough. All right, let's, uh, let's talk about some crypto. I got some crypto in my wallet. Hanging out on my Ethereum blockchain. Yeah, I got some crypto in my wallet. Some dirty sushi polka dot NFT Decentralized Anonymized Fabulous Cryptocurrency All right. All right, where should we start? I think I think uh, uh, we should start with you because I just did the last story. Oh, the, the, for symmetry, that makes sense. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, all I have is just an update on uh, the Voyager. Uh, we asked Jeremy to reach out and kind of give us a, uh, an update of where things were going with, because he was one of the people trying to get his money out of there. And I think recently we just talked about how they were letting, not minority, a minority of customers, not minority customers. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, he sent this tweet to us uh, from Voyager, basically telling everybody that there were multiple bids submitted as part of the restructuring process. Uh, there is an auction scheduled for September 13th. Um, once that auction is complete, then they're going to share more information about the winning bidder and what that means for you as a customer. Mm. <laughs> oh, so I guess it depends on how big the bid is, whether you're going to get your money back. <laughs> right. Like, that's how I read that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, for It's so fucked up, too. Because remember how we were looking at, like, there's a difference between staking and, like, just, uh, like, holding your crypto? Yeah. And it's kind of like a weird like mix between the two, I guess. They just pay like interest on everything. They don't it's not like staking like traditionally where like you give your money, they hold it and then you get a return on that to plus. It's basically like a CD for crypto. It's like a cash deposit. Mm -hmm. You lock it up for a certain amount of time, but like your coins should never have been locked up on there and if, I still don't understand how they can even hold on to it and not give it back to you. Maybe the ownership of crypto i don't know i don't know how those rules work i mean i guess it really just like if td ameritrade went under like the shares that i own in a company those are my shares not td ameritrades i don't think that i would never not get those back but they're also fdic insured too so i mean they're yeah and they really are fdic insured not just saying that they are <laughs> um i do remember like when I when I was trading on Robinhood and they they're like we offer crypto now like the fine print was like yeah but we own the crypto so right okay so <laughs> just trust us yeah so if you don't if you're trading crypto and you don't actually have your own wallet where the yeah. assets are assigned to you like that uh, I would be you don't actually own them yeah I'd be very wary this is a I guess a cautionary tale for everybody yeah. Uh, yeah, that's all I really had. It's just a quick update on that. We'll talk more about it once the results of that auction comes out on the 13th. And uh, so Jeremy was sharing that with us? Yep. Yeah, he hasn't. He has not gotten anything back yet. Did he have any, anything else to say? Oh, um, I asked him if he was joining Team Random because he, he tends to, uh, to to pick their side. Yeah. Uh, he said he will be, but not. he doesn't want to be the only one. So we got to hit a threshold, <laughs> at least 10 people on that list before he'll jump on the wheel of randomness. Oh, okay, okay. He did so, say random has made him a lot of money, unlike you or 
you or me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think for that, you're just going to be on the wheel regardless. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, the, the, the penalties are pretty harsh if you don't play along. Right. Oh, they won't be anything too crazy, right? Well, I'm saying is if even if they were, what would happen if they don't do them? Nothing. Oh, God, I know, right? Yeah. We just won't read your messages on the <laughs> air anymore. <laughs> Unless they're funny, and then, well. And then we still will. By the law of comedy, we have to read them. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I, had a, I had a crypto story. Yep. Um, apparently, the lawsuit against Elon Musk for racketeering is expanding. Oh. You might... You might recall uh, maybe a couple times Elon Musk mentioned uh, Dogecoin. I remember him talking about that quite a bit. <laughs> uh, occasional tweets. Uh, I don't occasional wanna... tweets. Yeah. Yeah. Apparently, you know, this lawsuit accuses him of running a pyramid scheme to support Dogecoin. And uh, the lawsuit expanded to include seven new investor plaintiffs and uh, six new defendants, including uh, Musk's companies like the, the boring Hyperloop company oh re- wow yeah yeah uh huh. at spacex tesla uh which to me i has got me scratching my head um because i don't know what spacex did to drive up the price of dogecoin they just have money yeah it's just they're attaching as many names i think to this lawsuit as they can to try to get a bigger settlement would be my guess the lawsuit's claiming that uh those companies actually profited off of uh, uh, Dogecoin. I'm not sure how SpaceX would have, but I mean, it was te- Tesla was taking Dogecoin for a little while, wasn't it? And I know they bought some Bitcoin and then sold it. Value dependent solely on our, uh, I'm not sure. I don't know. Uh, the original lawsuit was filed in June. And shortly afterwards, Musk tweeted that he would keep supporting Dogecoin. And in an interview, he actually said people that work around the factory at SpaceX or Tesla asked him to keep supporting it. So it sounds like his own employees have been buying into it. And they're like, come on, let's not do a dump here. Oh, okay. Uh, They also, they added uh, the defendants, the Dogecoin Foundation, which claims to be a nonprofit that provides Mm -hmm. governance and support for Dogecoin. The the funniest thing to come out of the story, though, uh, was it pointed out Dogecoin's been declining in market value since May of 2021? Mm-hmm. Right around the time Musk went on Saturday Night Live. Oh, and he called it a hustle. And he, yeah, on Weekend Update, Michael Shea pressed him yeah. on it. He was like, all yeah. right, it's a hustle. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I actually watched that. That was one of the few episodes I watched. Yeah, he did an okay job. I should say the writers did a good job on yeah, that yeah. episode. Um, he just showed up and was himself for all the sketches. Uh, yeah, yeah so Doji Cohen down around six cents on Wednesday from around 74 cents back uh, when he was on SNL. I want to see uh-huh. how this plays out. I don't know how you could, because, because we, we've, we've definitely talked about how he's used Twitter to pump things, mm-hmm. right? Um, Whether he's uh, doing it on purpose or not. Right. That's a little harder to prove, but the fact that he has the ability to do it is very, very true. Well, here's my question is, do you have to prove intent on a pump and dump? Um, Because I mean, for it to be a real pump and dump, doesn't he have to somehow profit from it? Well, I know when he pumps Tesla and then he sells the shares, he profits from it. Yeah, I would think that they'd have a better chance of getting that lawsuit going. (laughs) You know, like, because you could have the best intentions. Like, I mean, if it was me on Twitter and I'm like, I I have these Skydle tokens and I'm like, hey, everybody Skydle's the shit. And then it shoots up and I'm like, oh, I'm rich. And I sell some (laughs) like that's that's a pump and dump, whether I was doing it with nefarious purposes or not. Right. Right. Like it's such a to me uh, interesting and tough nut to crack. And I, I want to see how these court cases play out. I want to see what happens for us if we ever get any sort of fame out of this show. If we can resist the temptation. Oh, to, to pump and dump? To, to pump and dump <laughs> anything that we're holding. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> wow. Uh, well, like I just said, if it's something I believe in, I'm going to talk about it. I know, exactly. But if it shoots up, then... And if it shoots, if it shoots up, I'm going to sell some. <laughs> it's going to be really hard not to use that for evil, though. <laughs> oh, well, I would hope if we got to that level, we would be making money through other revenue streams, and I wouldn't be greedy to that point. Oh, that's not the whole reason of getting famous? Is to... 
to two pump and dumps. Yeah, I thought that was the word. I thought that was what the game plan was. Yeah, <laughs> I missed that meeting. Oh no! Wait a minute. Sorry. Uh, scams are more more on the up now. Not 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 pump and dumps. I forgot yeah, we just, covered that. Just straight scams. Yeah, yeah. Remember the the scammers are now uh, taking over. Yes, yes. Yeah, we don't oh, need to pump boy. and dump. We just need to make a coin and sell it to people. Yeah. Speaking of which, how's that coming along? Uh, the the two bulls coin. The two bulls NFT. Kind of forgot about that, didn't we? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> All right, fair enough. <laughs> How about you draw instead? <laughs> ah, shit! Where's my money? <laughs> Where's my money? You better give me my money. Got money for fake mustaches. <laughs> oh God! No, no. Uh, Kyle, would it shock you to know that I didn't trade this week? Uh, if because you were sick, I think that was probably a very good decision. And I'd even let you use that as a good. Oh, okay. Well, my good this week was I didn't, I didn't trade despite several opportunities when I looked at my charts. Let me ask you, were you tempted to trade? No. Okay. So no bad. <laughs> all right. Well, my good, bad, and ugly all revolve around the same thing. Uh, Friday, you tried to short the market. All day Friday. No, I didn't try to short the market. Well, I did once. <laughs> I had one short, one long. No, uh, I ended my first week live, uh, green. Hey, ended up uh, with I think forty-two points on eight trades. Fuck yeah! I was actually super shocked to see how few trades I had this week, but actually still pretty decent. Well done. Pretty decent uh, return. Yeah, I was very happy with that. Uh, also good. I'm throwing in here too is stopping early on Friday. Mm-hmm. For reasons that will be apparent uh, as I continue discussing the bad. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> so Friday morning, I was feeling a little nervous. Um, um, had a good, was sitting on a decent week. I didn't want to screw it up. Uh, you know, it's always in the back of your head. Like you're just one meltdown away from just wiping out everything. Like it only takes 10 minutes to, to wipe out a week's worth of work. It's true. So I was already feeling like kind of nervous about that. Um, I took one short that didn't work. I got stopped out. I took one long on a breakout over the open, uh, opening range that made 18 points. And then I looked at my account balance and saw that I was on SIM. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. And I was ready to be done. Like that one trade, like that was my, okay, fuck. Yeah, did it. Week's over. I'm done. Crushed the week. Yeah, so to to end up being on sim and thinking I was alive was really, really, really hurt me. Uh, and the ugly was just how much it affected my mentality. I was I was actually kind of surprised. Like I took a break. I went. I helped the wife do a little bit of stuff out in the garage. I came back to the computer, thinking like you know, forty minutes later should be calm back down, reset. And nope, still was upset about it. So that's why I ended my day early. Okay. Okay. Well. I think I think ultimately you can t- take some good out of that, right? Yeah, and that's why I threw it in there in my good too. Stopping, stopping, yeah, was the good. Uh, the, the ugly was just how much it did affect me. Like I'm still not past that. Like letting little things like that. No, that's not really that little, is it? No, no, I don't think it's that little. And it's going to affect you. The matter, the fact of the matter is, is how long and how deep. And can you stay away until it doesn't, it's, it's not affecting you anymore too. Is the Right. Can you identify that moment? And that's what the real good was. I think it's just end the whole week. We're done. I'll count it as a win on my tracking because for all intents and purposes, it was a live trade. I had all the emotions of a live trade. I didn't know it was him. You, yeah, you thought it was live. I even cut the runner a little bit early just because um, it was starting to flip, you know, a point for my take profit. And I was like, yep, oh, close enough take it oh yeah shit man like yeah it was just a good trade all around i managed it well um well yeah the good news is you finished green for the week and there's always another trade there's always next week there's one or two good trades every day is what i've been finding and once you hit that that's all you need you're done yeah um all right well shall we make a bet Let's do it. Let's do it. I need it, wanna feed it, gonna win it if I take it from you. I'm filling my positions, quit your bitch and random's gonna lose. Got a chart 
pull the levels and I stop That's not too tight It's bet, pick a time in the shop So pick them right <laughs> all right dan do you have the hot hand right now um i was gonna propose nordstrom as a long opportunity mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but i want to hear what you have to say that's jwm yeah jwm nordstrom i didn't even look at it uh nordstrom oh as a long as a long yeah yeah looking at the the weekly I like I like the setup. I wish the the volume was bigger on the buy side for the uh, week. Oh yeah, yeah. The weekly the weekly looks nice with that doji on the 29th. Yeah, it's got a nice uh, morning star candle pattern, and it's got a really great gap. That's on the daily, is what I was looking at. Yeah, they gap down because that what that good earnings. What was their fucking guidance? Jesus, it must have been awful. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Ga- gap down like ten percent. Jesus. Yeah. See, I, I, uh, I like, I like Rocket Labs right now. Uh, that's that's the one that see. I was looking at. RKTB. RKLB. Um, RKLB. This was a space company that uh, Cody Willard, the Skydal token guy, was talking about. That's the worst chart I've ever seen, Dan. Yeah. Yeah, that's what he yelled. But this was before that rounding bottom. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That looks really nice. Actually, it looks uh, like a bit of a cup and handle. Yes. That's what we're in right now. They had good, solid earnings at the beginning of August, about a month ago. Um, fuck, I like this. I like the way it held. Pulled back to a good level. That held, yeah. That $5 mm-hmm. line. Uh, yeah, that held that really nicely. Uh, yeah. yeah, okay. You want to do that with the take profit at? Seven dollars. Um, I mean, I would do the first take profit at six. Let's do six and a quarter. I mean, well, look at the look at the. I'm just afraid it's going to open at six dollars, and we're only going to get <laughs> like ten cents on the first take profit. Okay, I'm just saying. Look at the the volume by price here. There's the... oh, I don't have that anymore in my chart. What? I forgot to renew. Oh my goodness. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well. Okay, you pick it. This is a good one. I like it. What are the what are the points here? I think our first take profit is six dollars, and we'll we'll do our second take profit at uh, six sixty, which is huge. It's, it's, it's another ten percent gain. And if you think we're getting twenty percent this week, you're insane. What do we do if it opens like within like ten cents of our take profit, though? All right. If you're if you're that scared, then We'll take where it closed Friday and where it opens Monday, and we'll add that to the take profit, the actual dollar amount. How does that sound? That sounds really complicated. Well, it closed at five fifty nine. If it opens at six, then we'll add. We'll say six forty one. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yes. We'll add that to both of the take profits, but not to exceed seven. Yeah. Six, and then I would put the stop two. at five thirty five. 5.30. Stop loss, 5.30. It seems a bit tight. You don't want to go, uh, no, I don't know if I want to go a full <laughs> $5 either. Yeah, that seems too too loose yeah. if it gets down there. Yeah, we don't uh, want it anymore then. Yeah. All right, I like it. 5.35, you said? A 5.30. 5.30, okay. I guess, I, right. guess, I guess we could do 5.20. Um, might as well protect our gains. We're in the lead. All right, yeah, 5.30. All right. Why risk it? Why risk it? All right, four and seven. Uh, that would be a NASDAQ. Uh, you ever heard of a NetEase? N T E S? No. Looks like a NASDAQ um, tech services ooh. software. Looks pretty good on that daily. Oh, damn it, random. At least it's a high dollar stock, so it's got to go a long ways for them to, to, to really uh, hurt us. Yeah. Yeah, but it looks like uh, it's it's holding at the bottom yeah, of this range, and the top of the range is twenty dollars away. So I kind of want to go along this. <laughs> hey, you you always can. I know, right? You know, I, I I hear Jeremy's made quite a bit of money going along with random. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Ugh, fuck you, random. Fuck you, random. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this looks like a good. I mean, it's it a, keeps selling off around. 
96 and a half, 97. Got a bit of a channel. It's coming up to its 200-day moving average. It's holding a base at 82, 83 really well. Really well. Yeah. And it has been that, since March. The last three candles on the daily just look really pretty. Volume on a whole, though, on every asset I've looked at today has been pretty trash, though. Yeah. And you know what? Actually, now that I think about it, it's probably because the Fed is entering their blackout period coming up here. We've mm-hmm. got the... Their, their next meeting happening, not this week coming up, but next week. So could be a lot of risk off leading up to that. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people aren't just aren't trading. Yeah. Let's we'll see. All right. There you we have get it. Through it. We're going to, we're going to go long rocket labs and uh, random's going to go long net ease and we'll be back at you in a week or so. Tell you how that went. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully. Well, hopefully. Well, um, well, I'm just realizing, like, if if we picked my d- picks two in a row and I did well, like, I'm like, oh shit, I'm due for a loss. Oh, <laughs> you want to re-record that? No, <laughs> no, 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 no. I don't want to just switch to mine and suddenly be the one to lose it for us. Like, this is introducing <laughs> a whole new dynamic that's really interesting. <laughs> yeah, we got to get used to that. Yeah, I All don't right. want to. F- Fuck it up. <laughs> All right, folks. Thank, thanks for sticking around to the end. As always, like, share, subscribe, hit up the shop shop. You know all the things. Do them. Please. Do them good. Make make <laughs> Kyle and, and myself uh, smiles more because we need it. Aw. Uh. Aw. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I've got all the energy, Kyle. i got all I the energy in the world. <sighs> yeah, thanks again, folks. Uh, but we got to we gotta close up shop, unfortunately. But we will be back at you soon. And until then, happy trades. Bye. Two Bulls in a China Shop is an entertainment program, and all thoughts and opinions expressed in the show belong to the hosts and not of any company. They are not intended to provide specific advice or recommendations for any individual or on any specific security or investment product. It is only intended to provide entertainment about stocks and the financial industry of trading. If you make trades based on what you hear in this show, you assume all risks for those trades.